Hi, I'm Andre from Museogenic. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement this physics-based propeller, which uh, rotates around uh, its axis. So let's see how it works. So as you can see, the propeller starts spinning and applies up force uh, in order to rotate at a certain speed, and it tries to um, maintain that speed, uh, whatever the force is applied to it. So let's see. If we try to affect it with this object, it will stop because the force applied to it is uh, great. But after we let it go, it starts rotating again. So let's go ahead and create an actor. And we'll use uh, for the base, we'll use a cube because we need a base for the physics constraint. So we'll use a cube. We'll scale it down. Then for the propeller, we're going to use a static mesh. And I've actually, I've actually modeled a propeller in a Blender. So we have it here. Let's rotate it vertically and 90 degrees. We'll just put 90 degrees here. So it's exactly 90 degrees. Okay. So we have to also add the physics constraint. Axis, uh, let's call it motor. Okay, and we have to fill in the names of the base here and the propeller. As you can see, they're connected. Now, in order for the propeller to move, we're gonna have to simulate physics here and we have to disable the collision between the base and the propeller so we don't have a um, weird movement. So search for collision here, disable collision. Now let's set the limits of the physics constraint. For the limits, the linear limits will leave locked everything and for the angular limits let's lock everything and we'll unlock the rotation in the vertical plane. So let's see, it's this one. Okay. So it should already work now and stay in place. Let's see. So we drag the propeller in. We'll just rotate it a little bit. And let's try it out. So it does rotate. It only rotates in one plane. So it's good. But what we can see is if we uh, execute like this, we can see it start to rotate without having a force applied to it. Now, this is because uh, its center of mass is different from the um, pivot, the rotation pivot. Now, the rotation pivot is actually uh, uh, the location of the physics constraint um, relative to the pivot of the object. Now the pivot of the object of the propeller, I've actually set it to, to the center of mass in Blender. But because the center of mass in Blender is probably uh, calculated differently from the center of mass in Unreal Engine, we have a small difference. So now what we have to do is actually uh, we can bring the center of mass of the propeller in the uh, at the pivot point of the propeller. So now we can do that using a function. So we have set center of mass for the propeller here. And this now there is a, a, a thing about this. This doesn't work in the construction script. I don't know exactly why. So uh, we're forced to use it here and for the uh, event we're going to use event begin play because it only has to be executed once. So we shift it once and then it stays there. Now for the uh, in order to set it we can't let's get 
rid of these. We can't actually set the exact coordinates. We actually, we're gonna set an offset from the actual coordinates of the center of mass. So let's see, we get the center of mass of the propeller. Now this is, will actually give us the coordinates of the center of mass in world space. In order to uh, convert them to uh, the local space of the propeller, we have to uh, get world transform of the propeller. And uh, with this world transform, because the world transform transforms the coordinates from the component to world, to do the, the opposite, we we'll actually need inverse transform. So we'll choose inverse transform location because this is the location. So what this will do is take the world com coordinates of the center of mass and uh, transform them into local coordinates of the propeller. Now, because the pivot point is the... Uh, in the local space is zero, zero, zero. We can actually just negate this and plug it into the center of mass because let's suppose that the center of mass is at one, one, one. Now, if we uh, negate that, it will be minus one, minus one, minus one. And when plugged into this, it will actually add to the value which is 111 and give us zero. So it will place the center of mass in the pivot point. So let's just negate this and plug it in here. <coughs> so if you try again now, what we should see is actually the propeller just sitting at base and won't start rotating it thing by itself. So as you can see, it stays in place but I can grab it and it moves normally. Okay. So now we actually have the center of mass exactly in the, the axis of rotation. Um, <clears throat> now what can we do to make it rotate? Now in the physics constraint, in order to make it rotate, we can add an angular motor right here. So select twist and swing, and let's look again. We've used swing motion. So we have to, <coughs> so we'll set, we're gonna set a target velocity. So it's going to apply a force in order to make it rotate a certain velocity. So because we're swinging, we'll check, we'll check swing here. And if we look here, it's actually rotating around the y-axis. So in the y-axis here, we'll put a speed, let's say 100. And we need a force that will actually be applied in order for the propeller to reach this speed. So let's say 100 here also. So let's try now. Now, as you can see, it rotates, but it rotates really, really quickly. And this is because here, uh, the speed is actually in rotations per second, and uh, which means it, it, if you want to transform it to degrees, it means that it does 360 degrees per second. So let's try a lower speed, let's say 0 0.5 here. So now as you can see, it rotates and we can actually affect it using a physics object like this. And after we let it go, it, it, it comes back to the, it uh, tries to come back to the um, uh, velocity that we've uh, set. Okay, so this is it. If you want to, uh, <coughs> uh, if you want to set the rotation, you can actually set it well, you can just, let's say, we create a variable here, current speed. We'll put it to float. We'll make it visible. 
and uh, what we can do is actually set the what we had here was the target velocity so we can set from the motor here set target velocity and we need angular velocity because it's rotating okay like this and here we just split this and we take the speed and we plug it into the y axis so now the speed that we have here let's compile for this uh, variable to be seen here so let's say one faster so as you can see it works no problem and uh, when you want to if you want to update this just in the event tick let's uh, you can get the speed and uh, set set this again each time and it will update in real time now let's so this is it uh, you, you can make it rotate and stay in place um, but uh, I wanted to also talk about the uh, pivot point and the physics constraint location and the center of mass so let's see here <coughs> so we have some different uh, elements so we have the base here now the base has a certain pivot that it's right here the physics constraint has its has its location here uh, and the propeller has its pivot here the propeller okay now what we can do is actually have what in uh, in our uh, what we do here now is actually have them all of them in one place so we can imagine these are in here in one place but we can have them uh, if we want a special rotation uh, we can have them different so let's do that so but let's see so if we if there is the difference here of um, a, of location what the propeller would do is actually rotate on this dotted line right here because it's linear uh, uh, location um, linear movement like this it's limited so it will actually stay at the same distance from the physics constraint so when it tries to rotate it rotates around this point right here on this dotted line so let's see this let's say so we'll take the propeller and we'll take the so we'll take the propeller and move it from the center and if we look at the physics constraint we can see this line now this line is exactly the one the line the dotted line right here between the physics constraint and the propeller so if we try it like this so let's move it up a bit so as you can see the propeller rotates around the physics constraint but it doesn't rotate around its axis it rotates around the physics constraint position so we may want to do this but so we have this option okay now in order to show you that this can actually be different from the base pivot let's move also the pro the physics constraint so as you can see we have two lines the red one which connects the physics constraint to the base and the blue one which connects the physics constraint to the propeller now the red line which is here which is this one it doesn't actually it stays exactly the same so it's like a metal bar or something so the rotation of the base 
actually uh, is translated and the rotation and the location move uh, uh, change of the base is translated to the physics constraint so this these two go together where, wherever but the other one the blue one actually is dependent on the linear and angular limits so if we try again now We can see that the, the propeller rotates around the physics constraint, which is here, but not around the, the base. So this is actually useful if we wanted to have the axis off-center a little bit, or it depends on the situation. So now if we... Uh, let's... So let's come back to the center of mass. So if we ha want to, uh, so what happens if the center of mass is really uh, far from the pivot point? So let's bring this, the propeller to the location of the uh, physics constraints. So it's 19, zero and fifth minus 51. We'll just copy it. Zero and minus 51. So now if you try again, so it rotates normally around its axis at the location of the physics constraint. Now let, w let's see what happens if the center of mass is really different from the pivot. And in order to do that, we're just uh, going to cheat. We're going to set the center of mass manually. So let's unplug this. Uh, so let's put here, uh, let's say 10. And let's see what happens. Well, if we, I think it's, I have to put it further away. 100, let's say. Now we don't see any difference because, well, there is a small difference. Let's lower the force and now we'll see a difference when we lower the force and the speed. So let's say 1 here and the force to 10. So now we can see that it actually introduces a, a wobble. It rotates. Um, it rotates uh, non-uniformly. So it rotates fast and then slow, fast and then slow. So if you see this uh, behavior, just make sure that you ch uh, you you make this <coughs> and you connect it here. Okay. So this will bring and but of course so if you just make sure that that the the pivot that you've set is actually at the center of mass and in the modeling program you can you can do that easily okay so let's try again now so as you can see it rotates uh, constantly okay so this is it uh, thanks for watching bye bye